Hello, today is January 19th, 2015. We're meeting today with Miss Elizabeth Krupa at her home in Omaha, Nebraska. My name is Brad Hoops. I'm the interviewer with Remember and Honor. Welcome, Elizabeth, and thanks for sitting down today to, to tell your story. <laughs> Thank you. Let's start out, if we could. Tell us a little bit about yourself, uh, your date of birth, where you were born, and a little bit about your family. I was born December 30th, 1922, uh, in South Omaha on 3429 X Street. We was poor. <laughs> uh, my father come from uh, Lukendorf, Croatia. And he, I think he came when he was about 17. He stayed with the cousins of ours, and he was in World War I, my father was. And then uh, after that, uh, he came home. I don't know how he met my mother, but he met her. So, so he came to the States and fought for America in World yeah. War? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, he was uh, uh, in, uh, I think it's in artillery or something like that, anyhow. He, uh, they got married in, in 22, and uh, we lived, like I said, in South Omaha, and that was a, it was like a, a Croatian, uh, there was a Croatian, Serbians, Lithuanians, it, it was an ethnic neighborhood. And, uh, and then I was baptized at St. Peter and Paul's Church and went to school there, graduated from grade school, then I went to South High uh, for two years, and then my father thought it was time. It was in them days. They thought the oldest person is supposed to quit school and help support the family. And you were a family? How many siblings did you have? How many children? There was eight of us. Eight? And you were the oldest of eight? Yeah. Wow. So I went to, uh, I went to, I worked at uh, Jubilee. Uh, we made musical car horns until the war started. Then they closed that plant because they made uh, um, shells for the war. And then, uh, well, they when I got laid off, they had uh, schooling. If you wanted to get a job uh, um, at uh, Glen L. Martin in uh, Fort Crook, yeah, Fort Crook, Omaha. And uh, so we went to night school, riveting and blueprint, uh, schooling my sister and I. My father thought it was all baloney because he never believed in education, which I did. So that education is uh, worth it. When I got my first paycheck, I showed it to my father and I said to him, see what education is? My check is bigger than yours. Uh -oh. And he didn't know what to say. He didn't argue with me no more. So anyhow, uh, I, we, uh, we went out um, to apply for a job out at, uh, it's off it now, but it was called Fort Crook. Uh, had, had the war started by at this point, or was it was the war coming? Uh, no, it started already. Yeah. Well, let me ask you, do you remember where you were and what you were thinking when you yeah, heard about Pearl Harbor? Yeah, I was Harbor? in the front room, when I, and, I was, uh, and I heard it on the radio, and then I, that's what I told. Uh, my mother, because we went to school before this, because they, um, I think they kind of knew something was going to happen, and that's when they did heads. We went to school, night school at South High. That's where I went to the high school too, and I waited uh, till my well, see my sister graduated uh, in um, forty, yeah, and in, in forty two. And that, that, that I waited for her, so then we went to school together at night. And like I said, and then we went out to off at, um, Fort Crook three times before we finally got hired. And then I got hired in the gun turret department. My sister was in a different department. And then I worked in that department in shipping and crating and uh, on the line and um, then, I don't know how many years we worked in that. And then when they started, uh, we didn't, they, we worked on um, tourists for the Martin Marauder. Yeah, Martin Marauder. Then from there, uh, when we didn't need as many tourists, uh, the, and uh, 
they uh, changed over, they quit making the Martin Marauders because he was having a problem with them. So they, that's when they brought the 29s in. Then I worked upstairs in the, on the 29s for a little while and then they uh, opened up the camouflage building and I was transferred over there and that's how I happened to uh, work on the NOLA Gay. Now what was the camula camouflage building? Was that? that is your, the planes come from the main plant down to there. We check them, clean them, test them, and, and uh, make sure uh, uh, they're ready to go out. We had to do the overall uh, complete coverage of the whole plane before it went, we took them down to the hangar. So, uh, and then, uh, matter of fact, uh, we had a kind of a close call one time. I was going down and I was in the nose turret of the 29 and was going out of the building and um, uh, there was a plane coming in and uh, I hollered, I said, hold it, there's a plane coming in. And then we did and then it came, then we went down with the plane. <laughs> down to the, and see, uh, the, the, the base, Army Air base was right next door. And see, and then uh, we would take the thing down and uh, uh, to the firing range. I got to uh, shoot with that. Oh, the, them things shake you to pieces. Is that right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. And then one other time I went down when um, we had a problem with the um, dome on the turrets. And I and see, uh, it, you couldn't even have a scratch in it because if wind got it, it would take it. You know, it would break the, the plexiglass mm -hmm. dome. So, uh, and then, uh, like I said, we would have, to, there was a certain kind of liquid and you pour it in there and it um, sealed it. And we had, they called um, Dueler's Rouge that you use on that to smooth it and, you know, it bl blend together. And that's, a, that's one of the times I went down and shot the, into the, uh, it was a great big um, mound of dirt like, and that's what the firing range was and we went down there. So, uh, did you ever get a chance to go up on a test flight? No, I, a matter of fact, uh, one of the guys wanted me to go with him, one of the pilots. I'm glad I didn't because that plane crashed. Really? Wow. Uh, yeah. Wow. Art, his name was, he was crippled. He was a pilot. But uh, like I said, um, there was one of the guys, uh, Dick Matthews, he was from Friend, Nebraska, and he had his own plane. He was a crop duster. And uh, and that uh, and he uh, was one of the test pilots, and then uh, there was Fritz Schoen, and Tommy Tamara. He was from New York, and then there was Bill Leachy. He was in uh, up in Idaho someplace, and uh, mm -hmm. them was our inspectors and test pilots. And there, there was only five girls, in uh, and I had to laugh though when. Uh, Dan Holding and Vic Myers was our bosses. They were brother-in-laws. They were from Baltimore, Maryland. They brought them up. Anyhow, <laughs> had, Dan wasn't too happy with women. When he, we come over and he said uh, to us, I want to see who these girls are that they shipped over here. So we, we all came, we uh, stood, we, uh, oh, how should I say? We came out and uh, we climbed the plane and we uh, all stood, all five of us girls, on the wing. And Dan, he, he looked so mad at us. So I went and pulled up my pants leg and gave him the come up and see me sometime. And he bust out laughing and after that, uh, we were all in. <laughs> and at any time uh, I needed blueprints, they did, he sent me to go get them. Uh. He, he, oh, he was a night. Matter of fact, even after the end of the war, he came, which is very, you know, uh, uh, unusual. He asked me what I was going to do afterwards and all that stuff. He was so nice. He, them two guys are the best bosses I ever had. Because my first boss, when I worked at Jubilee, he was mean and not very nice. I used to go home 
from work and I, <clears throat> as soon as I left the building, I'd say, well, the building might burn down or I might die. I ain't gonna think about tomorrow. That's how bad that job was. But see, there was a lot of discrimination. And this is in um, uh, uh, 39. And 40, because I, I worked three years there mm -hmm. bef uh, in the uh, uh, making the car horns before the war started. Mm -hmm. But yeah, they, he was, uh, I don't know what happened to them afterwards, but they, uh, he was, uh, then seeing I could read Blueprint, and that's the reason he sent me a list. And sometimes it was forever coming back, and he says, she's visiting everybody in the plant, <laughs> <laughs> which I was. <laughs> <laughs> because I knew so many and there was different departments, yeah. you know, and that and stuff and yeah, it uh, I, I, you know, I really liked it and the people, that's one thing Then people was really, uh, all the girls in that, uh, see our church department was all girls and we had just the boss, uh, Stan Nimitz, he was from Baltimore, Maryland, he was uh one of the bosses, and Mr. Roberts, he was a real good boss in the turret department. Then our um, uh, government inspectors was Mr. Briggs and Mr. Fisher. And that matter of fact, one of them wanted me to go to school for um, uh, government inspection. But uh, being I didn't have a full education, oh, wow. I uh, wasn't allowed to uh, follow through on that. Hmm. So... That's what I said, I, I really, and that's why I, uh, my sister and I pitched in together to send my brother Bob to Creighton and that, you know, because I wanted to prove to my father, because my, uh, my father just, like I said, he, he, um, uh, he came here to get away from that, but there was a lot of things uh, he couldn't get rid of. And we even had one neighbor lady that she just, she thought, no other nationality should be in our neighborhood. Oh, and one of my girlfriends was Polish, and she was so nice. And Eleanor was afraid to go past her house hmm. on kind of that. I said, Eleanor, pay no attention to her. You're my friend, and you're in this neighborhood, and that's it. See, and, and there, even in uh, where Stanley uh, lived, that was all Polish. And uh, they, <laughs> Mrs. Uh, uh, what you call combo? I live across the street. She said, uh, 24th Street from Venton to uh, Center, I think it was. That uh, this side was all Polish, this side was German, and you never crossed that line. Wow, wow. in them days. So, uh, Stanley was Polish. Oh, full blood. And, and, and did you when did you guys meet? Did you meet during this time or after the war? Or when after did... the war. Oh, okay. Yeah, All right. I okay. Was well, engaged, we'll get, we'll... I was engaged with some other guy. Oh. Uh, well, after the war, my sister and I, uh, she went to New York with a girlfriend of hers, and I, I was, I knew I was going to break up with this guy. So I said to my sister, "Let's go on a trip." So we went and packed up. We went to New York. We stayed for three months. We lived in Providence, Rhode Island, right across from the Capitol there. And uh, uh, I would have stayed if they would have gave us a job. But they said, well, you know, you'll get homesick, you'll go home. Well, I couldn't get a job, so we did. But it made me stronger. See, I wanted to break up. Uh, he had changed, and I did too. And there were some things... It, they never come back the same. I don't care what anybody. Oh, says. he'd gone off to the war and come back. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Were, were you engaged, engaged during, during the for three years while yeah. he was away? Yeah. Oh boy, that had to be tough. And that's why I said then when he come back, uh, I you know I just told him it, we that's it you know and he he didn't understand and I said well I said we argue all the time and he said we won't argue I said no we won't we'll fight. I said, and I'm going to call it quiz. I said, I had enough of arguments to listen to my father to do this and do that, and I'm not going to, that's not going to be in my house. So anyhow, then, uh, well, he followed me all over <laughs> till, till, till I think, uh, till he almost, yeah, be, matter of fact, he's the one that told uh, his aunt that I was, you know, getting married to some other guy. She called me up, and I see, I didn't ask her, uh, tell her I was going to get married, and she called me, and I said, yeah, I said, I'm marrying somebody else, but I met Stanley 
uh, he came home from the service and he went to work at Kellogg's down on 26th and Center. And, uh, and I was monkeying around there. Uh, the machine didn't work. And so and we had to take, a, they had a lot of spoilage and stuff and the, that went down in the chute. So I went with the chute oh. <laughs> down, down there. And that's how I met him. Yeah. <laughs> well, let's back up and talk a little bit more about uh, your time at the plant. and. And, oh, uh, and what was what? So you worked in the turret department uh, yeah, once gun again. Yeah, the turret department first. I had to learn how to uh, how to put it all together. This is called a cradle. It's a, it's a uh, how should I say a production line. Mm -hmm. You know, then you have this cradle. Then you have this one piece uh, that went on there, and then the armature, and then the other part. And tell it get pieces like the down um, oh how should I say uh, the uh, seat uh, there was assembly line on the side that made the parts for the turrets and then we put it all together all the way down to the end of the line I had to learn how because that way when it got to the end uh, your amplifiers your government came then and they uh, tested them because uh you know the uh we put the torque tube bins and the guns get in there and uh then uh they uh and then there's the amplifiers on the side of the seats and that was uh, that's what's adjusted on the side the governments adjust that and uh, to uh, uh, uh to, oh, how should i say uh, you know that it works mm -hmm. there's because Matter of fact, this first piece, when you put it as a cradle in, it's a round thing, and it has, um, oh, what do you call it? like uh, washers and that, and it when you go like this, it had to be precision, no wibbly wobbly, and that then then from there you just add and add and add and put it together, and then when <clears throat> uh, they're all adjusted, it is sealed on the the armature and uh then that like i said and then um it's a uh, government inspected they uh have a decal like that you know and a seal and then that's when the you uh, from there you get uh have um oh it's a big um well how should i say it's a box anyhow and that's what you and then the crane takes and it lifts it into this uh thing and uh um, and then we sealed it up and and one time uh, we had, they had a problem with uh, the wood it was uh, was still uh, wasn't dry and so the armatures all corroded so they was gonna bring them back uh, 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 to bring them back from uh, California and have guys to come from Baltimore Maryland and had to rerun and clean them, and then they went. They were first. Uh, at first, they was gonna let us go shipping and take us there, but it was uh, cheaper for they uh, do it for have the guys uh, to finish them up for that. But that was the only time. With and one time, um, they had uh, this uh, part of uh, this armature that went into uh, on top of the turret thing uh, the torque tubes to have vibrated too much we so they found out they were sabotaged really oh yeah and and even when we uh, countersunk the when pins in it it to vibrated too bad so then they finally looks into it and, uh, and then they I think they must have got a different country uh, state to make it otherwise I don't know if they you know find out what wow. wow. they had one other time too they had because when I wor worked there that one time um, they took a guy out of the plant wow. Wow. Um, yeah matter of fact at one time I was surprised I was in the dance uh, we belong to the dance thing too you know the uh, recreation and Marty he was a uh, head of recreation and he would call the service, uh, tell us kids when the, the, they're bringing the servicemen in from Lincoln and all them. And so we would dance. 
And uh, anyhow, I was dancing with this one guy one time, and he asked me, wanted wanted to know what I was doing. And I says, you don't, once, one, what, that was uh, what you call it, one slip, you know. Oh, uh, loose lips sink ships? Yeah, yeah. Uh -huh, yeah. And I just looked at him and I walked, walked away from him. Because, wow. you know, I, I, I was surprised he would ask me. Because, like I said, when they told us about, about the uh, bomb, when uh, Dan when told me, he said, this, this uh, plane is on a, a secret mission and you're not to say anything. And like I said, I went home, I told my mother, I said, and you don't say nothing, and that was it. We never ever forgot it. Now, how do you think you got chosen to work on the plane? Were you? Well, I worked in the camouflage, oh, okay. and that's all I know. You you, know? I know. It was only fought, like I said, only fine girls, but all the rest were men. So, and I, I liked it. Well, I think because, uh, I don't know, I, 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 you know, I really enjoyed it. Yeah, yeah. You know, and that. And like I said, being we had such a nice boss, he was really good. Yeah, because he said to me, what is your name? <laughs> and I had told him, because he didn't know, because when we had a, they have a time clock guy, you know. Yeah. And uh, and they, he was the only one that knew my, what my real name was. <laughs> and, uh, and I, you know, I, I, like I said, I really liked it. Do uh, I know a lot of times with those secret missions and such, the FBI would check out people. Did, did the FBI ever check no, your background out? No. No. Okay. No, I, I, you know, I think uh, the people of Nebraska are a different kind of people. Yeah. I think, and like I said, and in, in, in this book here, it made me mad because it says in there, Pitt says something about uh, when he came to the plant to pick out this plane. He says we were, oh, they was stumbling into the place. We was tired, uh, coming from from the night before. We had a good time and not like we was drunk or something. And when I when I read that, I was mad. But I thought, you know, that's what they do. They baloney a lot of people, you know, like that. And uh, I never did. E I don't even. I don't remember him though. See, but I know the plane. Like I said, when I came and I looked at that plane, and I looked at it, and I said to Dan, "Something's wrong with this plane. It ain't all together." Hmm. I said, "There is no, there's no bomb racks," and uh, he. And then that's when he told me, because see, it was all shelled. Uh, you know, that guy took really a t chance, because, you know, that bomb was right behind him. See. Because that the uh, front bar bay was gutted, it was bent a, a just like this for the bomb to okay, sit in, yeah. you know, with this big old hook. See, and and like I said, there's no <clears throat> guns right. on this one, on kind of that and then the box car. Mm -hmm. They, you know, matter of fact, Alice uh, Jordan that I worked with, uh, her son was one of the guys on the the first plane. The box car. See, the box car went first, and then that was the big one, and uh, and then, like I said, but you had all these fighters uh, ahead of you. Mm -hmm. See, but like I said, it was uh, they tried different things first uh, uh, to uh, fit it in there. You know, there. This is you know, this is the. I think the bomb was about big as this room is, mm -hmm. and uh, and it was big like this and down. See, because the, there's no racks this time mm -hmm. and and there's no racks in the back all you have is the radio radar the pilots and and you guys in the t uh, uh, front in the tail and the front in the back the tail winners but no guns mm -hmm. on those two planes because I think if you would have you know they would have blow it up right there matter of fact the these guys pilots they uh, I didn't know that till later they had to take a, some kind of a pill in case they were captured. You know, they a cyanide it. pill. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, and we didn't know about that even until too late. You know, I mean, afterwards, that was really a, a, a 
scary thing wow. you know, to be like that. Now, when they told you this was this plane was for a special mission, did they? Yeah. Is that all they said, or did they tell you it was going to be the atomic no. bomb? They just said it was just this. No, that's yeah. why we didn't know it. Ah. Even when you know we were celebrating the end of the war, I I'm like dumbfounded. Well, we ended the war, but we didn't know how or what or anything until, like I said. It, we, we were told to shut up, you know, not to say anything. It's on a secret mission. That was it. We never questioned or anything. Huh. And that was it. Until, like I said, and then we, then that we started having reunions. We had a lot of reunions out there. When, when did you first discover that you had worked on the plane? When, it, put it, when did you put it all together that that was the, bomb, uh, the plane oh, that dropped yeah. the atomic bomb? Uh, not till Polly told me. And that was many, many years later? Oh, yeah. He, yeah. Like I said, uh, he was at Creighton in the grade school. Uh, uh, we never even talked about it. We didn't know. Uh, huh. uh, it, maybe somebody else wasn't as dumb as me, but I know I didn't either until he, uh, Polly come from school. And uh, he, was, he had to be about 15 years old, you know, to go to Creighton. So th uh, that was, uh, yeah, he's... Well, that would be 15 years. Wow. And I, you know, and I, I didn't realize it. I just went about my job, you know, uh -huh. and went to work and got married and, and everything. And then that woke us up. It seemed like everybody came alive then. And I don't know, maybe there was something in, in the papers. I can't remember why. But like I said, that is the first time uh, I even thought about it. Hmm. I just... It was just one of them things. So, and, and the people were, uh, you know, uh, like I said, to me, uh, the uh, people in Omaha were uh, really honest people. And the reason we got the Bauer plant here was because we was in the center of the map, and this, uh, Mr. Stortz, he was a big uh, money man in Omaha, and he's the one that got the plant to come here in the beginning. And that's how we got the plant here. Hmm. Any idea how many planes altogether you worked on through the? No, I have yeah. the faintest idea. Yeah. So, but I know the Marauders turned out not to be very good planes. We yeah. had a lot of problems with them, and that's when they, yeah, in that one ra uh, thing, uh, it's got a write-up in it that uh, well, I've got pictures of my girlfriends and that working up in the in the final assembly in the in the in the plant that uh, it tells you that the, the, the when they're switching over to bring in the 29s. So, and uh, like I said, because we was in the center of everything, that is one of the reasons they brought the thing here. It was safer mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that way. So. Was, was there a big celebration when the war ended here? Or what was it like when the war was oh, finally yeah, over? Oh, downtown. It yeah. was everybody. Like I said, I don't want to celebrate for... That the, it was the end of the war, but we didn't know we dropped the bomb. Well, uh, you know, well, we knew they dropped the bomb, yeah, but we didn't yeah. know where it came from. Yeah. That's the thing, you know, you, you just, you didn't, uh, I don't know. It's, uh, could you could you understand this bomb? You hear about this bomb, this big, massive bomb, could you could even understood, understand what the thing was? I mean, it, it just. No, I, you know, I, all of you know, they didn't even say that. They just said it was the end of the war. We dropped a bomb. See, huh. they didn't say what it contained, or what it was, or where it came from, or anything. It just they had a big parade downtown. I remember going there, and uh, I don't know. I think half the town didn't know nothing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. So with the war over, obviously, then the plant eventually closed. How much longer were you at the plant oh, before the I plant? I was there till September. It's got in there. Uh, I worked, I think, uh, exactly three years. I started in September and I ended in. I was one of, in the camouflage building. I was one of the late ones to go to Last leave. Because mm -hmm. yeah. I, I remember the other girls were gone already, even some of the guys, because that's what I said. Dan asked me what I was going to do, and then that, that's when we went on the trip. And uh, because I know, uh, what's his name, Fritz Schoen, he was one of the inspectors, and uh, he applied already for a job. Uh, he was leaving, and uh, he applied, and they found out he had uh, 
heart problem or something, so he couldn't get the job that he wanted. And I don't know if Dick Matthews, I can't remember if he went back or if he got married or what, but, you know, I thought, you know, sometime if he's still alive, and Friend, Nebraska is a little dinky town, so if you ever wanted to find out, he was, you know, like a pilot, and, uh, and uh, he uh, originally from Friend, Nebraska, and that maybe he would, you know, if you wanted to contact, look it up on the internet. Uh, and these little towns, everybody knows everybody. Yeah, Because yeah. my sister married a guy from O'Neill, and oh, yo, I couldn't <laughs> stand it. <laughs> Anyhow, uh, you know, he, he, he might be alive, but I don't know about, like I said, all the girls uh, that worked with me, there's only five, uh, one might be alive. She lives in Florida, but I'm not sure. But the, all the other ladies are gone. But you said you started after you guys discovered you'd worked on it. You started having reunions then? Yeah. yeah. We you, had reunions uh, all the time uh, for, oh, I think we had about five of them. Because a lot of the guys uh, that was in the service here, I got in the pictures in here, they came. But the guys from the um, Nola Gay never came. They were hmm. invited, but it, they just never, never came. I don't know if half of them were gone or what, you know, but uh, but we had just the whole bomber plant that had a re reunion. And that Was that pretty well attended? Did you get quite a few people? Oh, yeah, and, they, yeah. and then they had a tour, a tour of the plant uh, their first time, and then uh, everybody wanted to go to the camouflage building because they wanted to see where the plane, you know, see because that was altogether a different part of the plan. It was down, you know, planes came from the hangars up there. They were mostly done, see? And we just finished it all down there. And like I said, that was the final thing. Uh, and they were ready to go when they left our pla uh, place down at the camouflage building. So, yeah, it was... Uh, so, it was so, interesting. so the war is over. Uh, you're done with the plant. You take your three month trip to New York. You come back, and that's when you met uh, Stanley. Then, yeah, well, at first I worked down at the train depot for a while, and then I uh, they uh, uh, changed over. There wasn't enough of planes on tra uh, trains. They was uh, eliminating a lot of them, and my bro boss wanted me to go on the nights, and I didn't want to work nights, so. And everybody was telling me about Kellogg's was hiring. So I went down there and I got hired down there. And I, I didn't work there I, not too long. I worked a little while even after I got married. I don't know how, I never met, um, I was, well, like I said, I didn't know Stanley very long. I, I bet you I was four months and we were gone. Is that right, yeah? <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, like I said, when I met him, he, uh, one day he says to me, uh, I'm going on vacation in uh, October. And I says, so? You're going on vacation? I don't care. Cause I was going with a lot of other guys. <laughs> and uh, so he tells me again, I'm going out in, on vacation in October. And I said, so what? Why are you bothering me? He said, we're getting married. And I looked at him and I said, no, we're not. <laughs> he says, and why not? I said, because there's no place to live. Because there wasn't, you know, after people come home from, come the, from war the war yeah, and yeah. everything. And I said, there's no place to live, and I'm not looking. So I didn't say nothing. Pretty soon, a couple weeks later, he comes and he says, I found some place to live. And I said, this I got to see. <laughs> <laughs> so he looked at it, and it was the old grocery store converted into apartments. And I looked at it, and I said, he says, well, how about it? And I said, well, I guess so. <laughs> Real excited. <laughs> because I was having too good of a time, I had a lot of boyfriends. <laughs> and anyhow, uh, then I, I didn't say nothing, and pretty soon we just going along. I'm still going with other guys. <laughs> and uh, one day he says uh, something uh, about getting married in uh, October, and I said, Oh my gosh, I said, it snows and we have ice and everything. I said, I, no, I, this is crazy. He said, it ain't gonna snow and it ain't gonna, nothing's gonna happen. I said, oh, all right then. I said, uh, he said, I want a big wedding. I says, talk to my mother. 
He says, so he talks to my mother. And I says, and don't bother me. I still am going with other guys. <laughs> <laughs> Anyhow, so they get together. Then he says to me, what are you going to wear? I said, a suit. He said, ain't you going to wear a white dress? I said, why? I'm not wasting my money. He said, well, I said, you know what? It costs money, and I ain't spending it. He said, if you don't buy it, I will. So I bought a dress. Then he says, uh, I want a big wedding. I said, oh, my gosh. I said, talk to my mother. So they did, and they, they planned it, and I, when I was ready, they was ready. Uh. I didn't bother with nothing. <laughs> Him and my mother, they did everything, and all the neighbors, because they all did the cooking and everything. So, and it, boy, and it turned out real nice that day, and everything, and uh, like I said, and the next day was better yet, when we went on our trip, we went to visit, I had an aunt that was a nun, and so we went to visit her, then we went to visit Stanley's relation in Illinois, all the Polish, not, that was a Polish neighborhood too. And then uh, we come back and the apartment ain't finished. <laughs> I said to him, oh my gosh, I said, he says, I said, I don't know what you're gonna do, I'm going home. <laughs> <laughs> so I, he said, oh no, we're gonna live someplace. I said, I don't know where, but when you let, find out, let me know. So his mother said we could live there for till the place was finished. And that's what we did. Wow. Yeah. Uh, wow. And your parents had no problem the fact that he was Polish? No. No? No. no. My mother-in-law did. Oh, really? She, oh, yeah. Polish was Polish. Yeah. Well, yeah but see, then I uh, helped my mother-in-law. Uh, well, how should I say? Uh, she was, you know, uh, kind of old-fashioned way or whatever you call that. Uh, one day she was washing the windows and they had a two-story house so I, I opened the window and I climbed in and I sat in the window and washed the windows on the outside and I was in <laughs> she said oh just like old country see because I wasn't afraid of anything uh -huh. I just uh -huh. did it because at, when I was in grade school I washed the windows there we was two stories high and I always sat in the windowsill and pulled the window down on me and sat on the outside and washed it see and well, and I wasn't ever afraid like the airplane. When I worked on it, I just ran over the fuselage and hopped over on that and slid down. And and uh, I was and that's why I always cleaned the gutters here and I did all the roofing and everything here because uh, height never scared me. Stan it did bother Stanley, but not me. Uh -huh. So, well, I, like I said, I was a tomboy. Yeah, yeah. So I liked that yeah. kind and of stuff. And you said your nickname was Butch, right? I climbed telephone poles and everything. <laughs> so, uh, and, I, and I still like that kind of work. It makes me mad because I can't do it. Yeah, yeah. And uh, like I said, I, now I still do the plastic work on my porch. I close it in in the winter and that and stuff. But, and then if I get tired of waiting for Polly to fix the light bulbs, I'll do it myself. <laughs> but I'll go slow, see. But, uh, oh, yeah, it, oh, like I said, it was a, it was a, good place the people were nice that i worked with there was no friction there was no uh, you know how lots of place people work and you know you have this uh, bickering and stuff not that it they were the nicest bunch of people a lot of them were from little towns in nebraska most of the people were and they lived in rooming houses here and uh that's how i met my best friend arlene she was uh her father came here from some little town in Nebraska on kind of, uh, um, you know, before the war that we had um, depression, you know, mm -hmm. and, and no place to work. And they she moved here and then their father got a job and then that's how I met her. And we ran around together and was good friends till she died. Mm -hmm. Matter of fact, she just died a couple of years ago. Mm -hmm. And Nancy, she was good. and. Um, um, what's her name? Uh, Lucy we Weedman. She lived in Consolas, and uh, and then Laura. She was the only other older woman. She was the oldest, and then that other girl. She was from uh, South Omaha. But uh, like I said, um, most of the people were from Omaha. What, what would you guys do on your time off for fun and entertainment? Uh, we danced. Dan dance was it? Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. Like I said. Uh, and Maddie would call us that they're bringing guys in from Lincoln. So we would uh, go to the uh, to Music Box 
and we would go to Offutt and uh, dance there too. They had, and if uh, when the guys were going to get shipped out, we usually went there, and uh, and you know uh, our, there was locked down that one time because uh, the Missouri uh, River or something uh, over flooded or something and all the guys were confined to camp so then we went there for entertainment there too hmm. so uh, it was, uh, what, what, what was life like on the home front with all the rationing and uh, was that hard? No, it didn't bother us. It didn't? Oh, okay. No, I, I don't think we even paid attention. Hmm. I think because we was poor and it didn't bother us you know that you know, because I was thinking of that one day too. You were limited at so much mm -hmm. of stuff, but uh, I don't know. I, you know, if we didn't have it, it didn't bother us. See, we didn't have it, and matter of fact, I never ever, 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 ever ate breakfast, and mm -hmm. I still don't to this day. Uh -huh. And I never eat before noon, mm -hmm. and, and it isn't. And I hate coffee. I don't like the smell of it. And, and my mother and father, that's all they did was rattle, rattle that darn coffee pot and argue uh, who emptied it, and then the only two that drank it. <laughs> and anyhow, but uh, uh, I hated oatmeal. I hated anything cooked, see. And my mother said, well, either that or go hungry. And I said, fine with me. I went to high school three miles, and I worked on an empty stomach. It didn't bother me. Mm. Uh, you know, and people say you... You can't live with breakfast without it. They're cuckoo, because I'm I'm here. Yeah, right. So, yeah. but oh yeah, my sister has to have coffee. Ugh, I think it's a waste of time. <laughs> <laughs> uh, how how many years were you and Stanley married before he passed? Uh, well, fifty some years. Okay. Yeah, yeah Mary, we were married in the '46, and he died in. Uh, mm, gosh, I have to look. Uh, he died in. Wait a minute, I have to look at my prayer book. Oh, yeah, we can. We okay, can, yeah, yeah. I, I know it's over fifty years. Yeah, yeah. Matter of fact, because he wanted to, my neighbors and that, my aunt and them wanted to have a doings, and I said no way. I never liked all that stuff. Mm. You know, so I said I, I wasn't for a big wedding even, but but he liked stuff like that. He he was really a good guy. He had to be. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, my family loved him. My mother, he liked my mother, but he didn't never cared for my father because he knew, you know, what my father was like. Like I said, yeah. my father had no patience for with anybody. I don't care who it was, you know. He just, uh, you had to. Uh, I don't know. So it, that's just the way it was. Yeah, yeah. And there was a lot of them in the neighborhood like that. That's one of the reasons I think I was stubborn about different things because uh you know during depression you saw a lot of uh drunks and, and a lot of hollering because uh they didn't have enough and i and they wanted better and you know like i said now see even my grandfather on my mother's side they uh, he came from money too and you couldn't bring it over. This is what I couldn't understand. Yeah, we could sell things and go over there, but they could never take their wealth here. Hmm. My grandfather's uh, outfit well, had vineyards in, in Austria Hungary. That's where my grandfather was from. And on my father's side, matter of fact, on my father's side, uh, the, he, my father still, we have a relation yet, in the same ground where my father came from, and they, they, Otto Schuppe even said, he says, my cousins is going to own all Croatia because they keep buying and buying. That's how much money they had. Wow. Um. But we could not have it, mm. see? And I, maybe that's what made my father so frustrated. See, his, grand, his mother died when he was little, and his grandmother was very strict. And that's the reason he came here, because his uncle came here first. And then he came, and then his sister came. There was only the two kids. His sister stayed in Kansas, and, and I couldn't understand it because his sister, again, believed in education. Their kids, uh, Rudy and Rosie and Billy, had real good education. Rosie even uh, played the organ for the church and everything, and yet my father fought the same thing. Hmm. Why? I don't know. See? 
And I don't think his sister and him got along very good either. Because mm. he never stayed there. He stayed with cousins when he went to visit Kansas City. Because uh -huh. that's where uh, three-fourths of our relation lived, was in Kansas. Mm. But uh, he worked, you know, hard and all that. He was a night watchman at Cuddy Hayes. My dad was. So... And you talk about Polly. Is Polly your only child, or do you have yeah. other children? Okay. Uh -huh. yeah. yeah, I had a miscarriage when uh, when I married a couple of years, and then <clears> after that, yeah, because my insides were messed up from uh -huh. hauling all them bricks and everything. <laughs> <laughs> and, so, and that's what makes me so mad. I said to Polly, I could carry a stone block in each hand, and now I can't even hold a brick. <laughs> it's so frustrating. Uh -huh. Because, you know, I was so strong. Wow. And I wasn't, I was only 110 pounds, or 120 was the most. But I could do all those things and that, and uh, I don't know. Yeah. It's, uh, and I think a lot of it is in your head. You know, you make right. up your mind. You can do it, you can do it. See, that's yeah. the thing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, yeah. Well, Elizabeth, as we start to wind down this interview, is there anything I didn't ask you about or other stories you wanted to talk about so hopefully we tell as much of your story as we, we can. Um, any other stories out there that we didn't, or any areas we didn't, we didn't talk know, about? Think of something. Yeah. Think of something. What I don't about know. your brothers or your husband in the military? Any stories like that? that well, my brother was, uh, oh yeah, my brother Joel, he was in the First World War. He was, he was on the North Carolina, the battleship North Carolina. And this is what is so weird. My mother saw him get hit in her sleep. Then she got a notice that he got, he was a turret gunner, which was really weird. I work in the yeah. department, I worked for gun yeah. turrets. And he, that's what he had. He was a head of the gun turret on the U battleship uh, North Carolina. And my mother saw him get hit. And uh, his ship get hit and everything. And uh, like I said, and matter of fact, uh, my mother seen a lot of things, which and and I I have that same thing. I could I could tell, like one time. Polly worked uh, when he was in great uh, high school in uh, Ralston in the Baker store, and I said to him, "Now when you go, he walked a tour." I said, "Do not go to Q Street that way. Take a different route for a month. Something's going to happen in that corner." Sure enough, guy got killed. Mm. And, and I had a lot of things. My mother said, never sense. fight it. I used to, well, matter of fact, when Alex, this guy that I was engaged to, got hit, he got hurt in an accident, I saw it. And, and the phone rang, and I said to my mother, I'll take that. That's Alex. I saw it. Wow. Huh. And, 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 and he was home one time uh, for his uh, for vacation. And he says, well, I'm getting shipped out. He said, I won't see you for a while. That's why, you know, they send you. I said to my mother, I come home. I didn't say nothing to Alex. I said to Ma, he's coming home in two weeks. His father's going to die. And he did. But I don't, I don't have them feelings very much anymore. Mm -hmm. It's like at that time, I don't know why I did. And my mother had the same things. And she'd say, don't fight it. And I didn't. They would, and lots of times, Stanley, we'd go someplace and he'd question me. I said, no. He said, why are we going this way? I said, because I have a feeling. Sure enough, there would be an accident. But uh, I wish I'd get that way and win some money. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> but I don't get that feeling. Matter of fact, that, you better not put that on there. My brother Bob always said, and my brother Bob has got cancer now. He's in Lincoln. I said, Bobby, you know when we're going to win is when you're laying in the coffin. And I said this years ago when we started, and he's got cancer. But I, I said, I quit. I said, I'm not buying no pick of fun, no uh, mega balls. I said, I just, I ain't going to bother with it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. But uh, no, like I said, uh, it was, uh, uh, you know, it was a nice experience nice people and uh, I was glad it was over you know I'm kind of a like I said they 
I didn't realize it uh, until after the war how close they were already, the Japs, or we would be speaking Japanese instead. Sure. And, and it made me mad because people would uh, all gang up outside of the gates for years out here at Offutt and say we were murderers, which we saved, uh, you know, it even says in the book how many people we have saved, uh, Americans, because uh, we wouldn't be here right, right. on kind of, uh, and, and how terrible, I didn't realize that one uh, uh, Wilma that lives in Ralston, she was one of the ladies that worked in the territory department, and her sister Bert. Bert's husband is one of the boys that was in that march uh, the tan march? Uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, how uh, Bert said that and it, uh, her husband, I, until the day he died, it seemed like it never left him. He said that how they marched and marched, they could not stop. Uh, uh, if they did, they were killed right there. They buried, uh, he said, one guy alive uh, because he couldn't keep up. So. Bert's husband and all these other guys, when they saw somebody that was going to fall, they took him and carried him on their shoulder. They would gang up and make sure they, they the Japs would change guard, but our guys could not stop marching. They either made it or you didn't. And I didn't realize that until I, even when I read it in the book that Bert's husband was one of them guys. Mm -hmm. Wow. Till they died. Wow. It, uh, and a lot of the girls, I think three-fourths of the girls that I worked with had somebody in the service. I had, like I said, my brother and I, my Aunt Fern was the youngest Navy mother there was. Hmm. She had two boys in the Navy. And I had, I think, about 20 or 30 cousins that were all in the war. Wow. And one of our neighbor boys, came home and he never was the same. Uh, Joe Sakalowski, he was such a nice guy. He just wandered the streets wow. afterwards. And like I said, uh, the, it affects them. I don't care, you know, but the ones like Stanley and them that wasn't in real big fighting, uh, they were the best. I, they didn't come out with anything uh, against them. They, they could hack it. Yeah. But if you had any kind, like I said, my brother, uh, Joe, I, he was ornery, but he was worse afterwards uh, from that. And my cousin, Joey Algy, he didn't seem too bad, so I don't know what part he was in. But, uh, uh, and a lot of them, like I said, uh, I don't re even remember any of them, but uh, Joe Sekulowski or any of them that, you know, really died in the war of, of my relation, so. Mm. But they had, a lot, you know, a lot of memories. But nobody, like I said, n nobody even talked about the war. See, and that's what I mean. We didn't realize we dropped the bomb because nobody talked about it. It was just, it, well, it was a secret and that was it. And I think it was such a shock and to me, uh, it stopped so sudden. See, that is the main thing, I think. The bomb was dropped, everything ended, although, like I said, the Japs still ha argued, yeah. uh, you know, about it. They didn't want it. They, they were really evil. They just were terrible. And, uh, and, and another thing I learned in the book was they got medals for being the meanest. They would fight each other to be better, the Japs did. Mm. And they got ribbons and everything, medals, for being mean. Mm. See? It, it, it was ground into them. You know, they had to be the best. Mm. And myself, I'm wondering if they're still that way sometime. You know, yeah, they, wow. Did, did you guys ever get any, any formal recognition for your work out there? I mean, were you ever, was I ever formal, formally recognized that you guys worked on the plane? Any sort of ceremony or anything years no, later? Or? No, huh? no, we just had reunions, that's no. all. And uh, they had it out there at Offutt. I, well, I mean, Fort Crook. 
Yeah, they uh, and uh, we were allowed to go there any time. Long as we worked there at one time, that we were allowed to, all we did was tell them we worked there and what and that, and uh, we were allowed to go to the commissary or to yes. have lunch there or whatever we wanted to do after that. But it took a, a lot of years even, I think, to recognize that. Mm. How do you think that, that period of time during the war years, uh, did it play a role in your life, change your life, affect your life at all? Or do you just look at it as just simply a chapter in your life that you went through? How would you answer that? Well, I think it woke us up and it made the ladies realize they can do anything. That's the thing I was fighting from the very beginning, see? And more and more ladies uh, understood they didn't have to depend on the man. See, and uh, and that was another thing. See, I my great aunt, she had the worst husband you could ever have. Uncle Raymond, he was uh, he would bad mouth. He'd sit there and he'd come in the door and he was just bad mouthed by aunt all the time. And uh, and she was one of the ones I tried to grill into her head. You don't have to put up with that. She used to listen to them soap operas and she'd cry. I say, Ansi, your life is worse than that soap opera. She says, wait till you get married. She says, you'll see. I said, Ansi, you will see. That ain't happening in this my house, and it ain't gonna happen anymore. So when I married Stanley, she said, I see. You don't have to put up with that. See, it, it really woke up the women. They did not have to take that abuse. Yeah that the man was in the sole support. They, in the neighborhood, men would say, when the lady would argue, uh, they had to ask for money. One friend of mine, I guess she thought it was safe. I was visiting there, and uh, she said, uh, I need some money for some more groceries. He says, well, what did you do with the money I gave you on Monday? This is Friday, see? and. If you don't like it, you know, there's the door. This is my house. This is how they talked. Mm -hmm. See? And to me, that wasn't right. Matter of fact, when I bought the house, I put the payment down. I said, nobody's pushing me out of my house. I'm owning it. And we were both on it, see? Matter of fact, before my father died, the year before, we had to get a lawyer, brought him to the house, and made my father sign, put my mother's name on that, and it was a good thing because he died the next year, or we would have had a battle. But see, and they had them ways, and we found out you didn't have to be that way. See, but there was still a lot of girls that were. The matter of fact, I was talking to uh, Dorothy Vonder, and uh, she said too. Uh, her father was still that way till the die, mm. her mother. And, and another thing I'll tell you, when I, my first job, when I got it at Jubilee, my brother Joe reminded me of this. He said, I remember you came home from work and you went with you your paycheck. He said, you left the door open. He said, you knew Pa was looking for that check. I stood in the door. I said, I have my first paycheck. You're not getting it. I'm smart enough to work. I got the brains to handle my money. I'm paying board. And if you don't like it, I'm out of here. I, my father looked at me. He didn't say boo. And that was it. <laughs> and my brother Joe reminded me before I died. He said, I still see you. I don't know where I would have went, but that was it. Uh, see? Uh. And that's what I said. I, I proved to him. And, and uh, well, even some of the girls, even after the war, they were still handing their check over to their parents. I said, not in my house. And after that, when my sister went to work, she paid board too. She didn't, you know. But uh, like I said, I just, uh, I was stronger. I didn't like what I saw. And, and I, and I, like I said, we just fought. And the thing is too, uh, and, I, what I remembered, we were little, and, and uh, why it stuck with me, I don't know. One of our neighbors, 
uh, she, uh, Grandma Miller, she had a real nice house, the only big house in the neighborhood. She had bow windows, which I never saw, and you know, colored glass in the dining room and all that. She put her house into her son and a uh, son-in-law and daughter's name. Well, he financed something and he lost the house. Well, Grandma Miller didn't have no place to stay. He shoved her out. I was a little kid, still in grade school. That stuck with me. I never forgot that. And, and that's what, uh, like I said, I learned from them how cruel people could be to turn out somebody like that when that was her house. It was a beautiful mm. house. It had pocket doors. Matter of fact, when I had this house built, I tried to explain to the carpenters what I wanted. I wanted pocket doors. They no. never heard of that. And I tried to tell them, so I ended up with the other kind. <laughs> and there, you know, like I said, there were, and I, I could see things different that they couldn't see yet. And, and yeah, that, wow. matter of fact, even washers and dryer, I wanted upstairs here. They couldn't fit it into the house. <laughs> you know, it, it, you know, it was a lot of years ago when I had this house built. And I can't remember what it was in 60, 60 something. And they, uh, yeah, because when Kellogg's moved out here, I think it was in 65. And then uh, two years, Stanley didn't drive. I had to take him to work. He was a mechanic and a ma machine operator. And he was on call. So he was on, like I said, I did everything here. I, I saw that the house was uh, built and everything. I used to stop here every morning when I took him to work and stomped the ground around the foundation because I read. I remember that from home, and that way you have no leakage around it. Matter of fact, they called a meeting because I was here pestering the contractors <laughs> all the time, and I said to him, I said, you're not here, I know what I'm doing. I said, and he didn't say nothing no more. And uh, anyhow, but uh, they, uh, uh, I, ca I came, and he worked just seven days a week, and sometimes, 10 hours a day and that's why I was really the man of the house and that's why I said I, I met even like the lot next door I took care of it and when uh, they uh, was surveying it I called him up and I said to him do they still have to put up they see they had that restriction when you build, uh, bought a lot around here within three years you had to build on it so and I so I called him I said, do you still have to put a lot on the house? They said, no. I said, write it up. I'm buying it. So I, I had the money. I knew I wasn't a spendthrift. Everything, I, I wanted land. See, my father could have bought property more. We did have property. We had property there and on the side. But they could have bought more acreage because I could see money in land. But my father wouldn't go ahead and buy it. Mm -hmm. See, and then when they when they said no, you don't have to. I said write it up if I want it. So that's why I have this lot next door. But uh, like I said, uh, it woke up people. Okay. That's yeah. all I can say. Yeah. They really, ladies found out they were worth something. It wasn't you that you had to listen. Right. Right. So, right. You know. Well, Elizabeth, I want to thank you for sitting down to uh, to tell your story today. But also want to thank you for doing your part to uh, save our country during the war. Oh, okay. Thank you. Uh, this is the cradle. It's a big iron thing on wheels. Then you put this here first ring on and then you adjust all the washers and that so that when you uh, turn it, it can't vibrate. It has to uh, um, go around smooth. Then you put on another piece of uh, the, uh, the uh, attached onto this. Then you put this big iron thing, which is the uh, iron um, what it, guard, mm -hmm. and then and then you put this here other piece. It's all cast iron. All this is iron, and then this is where your torque tube goes through. 
that holds your um, wings and these guns come through the wings then you put on the seats is attached to this big armature here then these um, uh, uh, then oh, I don't I don't know how I would say from the seat your uh, what is these arms to to work the 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 turret to go um, uh, that runs the guns up uh -huh. and down right okay and then on the sides here uh, 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 behind the seat this is the arm this is turned around behind this is uh, where the seat is. And then uh, it doesn't show the amplifiers on the side. That is on the side of the seat. And that is where you adjust for, uh, for these things, the power. Uh, I can't explain it. And, That's okay. And then uh, you uh, get your uh, plexiglass dome and put it on top. And this is how what you're, uh, you enclose this whole top and just your guns are th uh, through that and then uh, uh, this is uh, then th from there when this is all put together this is when we put it into the fuselage uh, 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 crates oh, okay. to ship out to other plants if we uh, don't need in, in the uh, we ship them to California and I don't know what other states uh, to uh, them factories to the planes. How, how long altogether would it take you to build a complete uh, turret? Uh, not very long because yeah. this was a whole line. There mm -hmm. would be a whole line right. of them. Oh, I would say uh, it never took a day. Yeah, okay. Uh -huh. Okay. It was just a, a gradual production line. And there was only one shift. Mm. That's all. Okay. And even in the camouflage building, see, that's why we, we could know everybody. We had only one ship. Okay. Other departments had uh, around the clock, like uh, tool cribs and um, um, all places that uh, uh, made the other parts and uh, uh, the wood shop. Um, the, yeah, tool and die, yeah. carpenter. And, um, oh, I don't know what else you would call it. Okay. Uh, this is my brother Joe. He's home on leave. He was stationed on the North Carolina. And this is us in our uh, outfit. I, I can't see our badges, but this is when we came off of, from home from work that day. We, my mother took our picture. Elizabeth, tell us a little bit about your jacket here. Well, uh, the... Uh, uh, made the jacket, I think, down in Texas someplace. Wilma and I sent for him. We could, uh, and I thought it would be a good uh, memory of all the years and a war memory of uh, what we went through. And uh, such a nice uh, bunch of people I worked with. And I was proud to work, uh, uh, was able to uh, work uh, at the plant during the war. Uh -huh. And there's some items on the front as well, right? Uh, just my, uh, yeah, the uh, uh, pit, uh, picture, I guess you would say, of the... The pennant of the, pl of the plane? Yeah. Uh-huh. Mm -hmm. Oh, very nice. 